fasting, or sawm. Every lunar year, the month of Ramadan, the fast of which is one of the pillars of Islam, comes to the Muslims. It is a time in which the Muslims rejoice greatly, being joyful because of the great benefits of this month. Allah the Exalted says, O you who believe, observing sawm or fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may be pious. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Islam is built upon five pillars, and he mentioned fasting in the month of Ramadan. And in a hadith Qudsi, the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, Indeed, every righteous deed of the son of Adam will be multiplied from ten times to seven hundred times. However, Allah Almighty says, fasting is an exception. This is because it is for me, and I shall reward the one who fasts accordingly. He left his yearnings, wishes and food for my sake. Thus he who fasts has two pleasures, a pleasure when he breaks the fast at sunset, and another when he meets his Lord, and indeed the change in odor, or al-khaluf, of his mouth, is more pleasing to Allah than the fragrance of musk. The scholars of Islamic law define fasting as to worship Allah by abstaining from the ingestion of food, drinks as well as sexual intercourse from dawn until sunset. The scholars have divided fasting which Allah ordained for us into two types. The first type is obligatory and is the fast of Ramadan, as well as fasting due to pledges which a Muslim pledged in obedience to Allah or as a result of expiation for one's inequities. As for the second type, it is the fasts which are recommended, for example fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, or fasting three days of every month, or on the tenth day of Muharram meaning the first month of the Islamic calendar, or the first ten days of the Hijjah, or the twelfth month, or on the day of Arafah, which is the ninth day of the Hijjah, etc. The commencement of Ramadan is established by the sighting of the crescent, when the crescent is sighted after sunset on the twenty-ninth day of Sha'ban, it indeed indicates the commencement of Ramadan. However, if the crescent was not seen due to cloudy weather or dust or smoke in the air, after the sunset on the eve of the thirtieth day, then Sha'ban will be counted up to thirty. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Fast when it, meaning the crescent, is seen, and break the Ramadan fast, when it is seen, but when it is obscured from your sight, then complete the count up to thirty. Fasting is only obligatory on a Muslim who has reached puberty, is sane and has the ability to fast. Intention is one of the most important pillars of fasting. The scholar said, it is obligatory to make the intention to fast the night before dawn if it is a compulsory fast. However, this meaning making intention the night before dawn, is not mandatory if the fast is voluntary. This is in accordance with the hadith narrated by Aisha, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, entered one day and said, Is there anything to eat? We answered that there was not. Upon that he, the Prophet, said, Hence, I am fasting. The second pillar of fasting is the abstention from everything that invalidates the fast from dawn until sunset. This is due to Allah the Exalted saying, And eat and drink until the white thread or light of dawn appears to you distinct from the black thread or the darkness of night. Then complete your fast till the nightfall. If anyone mistakenly eats before sunset or after dawn and then it becomes clear to him that his initial perception was wrong, it is not mandatory upon him to pay back such a fast. Concerning this Allah the Exalted says, 
And there is no sin on you concerning that in which you made a mistake, except in regard to what your heart deliberately intended. And Allah is ever oft forgiving, the most merciful. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, also said, Allah Almighty has relieved my nation of the sins they commit as a result of mistakes, forgetfulness, and that which they were forced to do. Contrary to what many people think, it is permissible to bathe and sit in a pool of cool water when one is fasting. And also swallow one's saliva and mucus. As well as taste food, but only with one's tongue, on the condition that none of it slips into the throat. Similarly, it is permissible to smell the odor of any substance and the fragrance of air fresheners. Also, it is permissible to use the siwak, which is the chewing stick, even if it is wet, but he would be careful not to allow any of it to slip into his throat. There are many recommended acts during fasting. The first one is eating suhoor or the pre-dawn meal, due to the saying of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, eat the pre-dawn meal, for indeed there are blessings in having the pre-dawn meal. Any amount of food even a sip of water is sufficient as a pre-dawn meal. This is in accordance with the hadith of the noble prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, where he said, The pre-dawn meal is a blessing, so do not forsake it, even if anyone of you will drink just a sip of water. Indeed, Allah Almighty blesses and his angels pray for those who have the pre-dawn meal. It is recommended to delay the pre-dawn meal. Zayd ibn Thabit, may Allah be pleased with him, said, We had the pre-dawn meal with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, one day, and we left, meaning from this sitting, for salah. Anas ibn Malik said, What range of time was between your meal and salah? He said, Up to the span of reading 50 verses of the Noble Qur'an. Proof of the mercy and forgiveness of Islamic legislation is the hadith in which the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If any of you hears the call to prayer while his container or cup of water is in his hand, he should not drop it until he satisfies his need from it. And also due to the mercy of Islam, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Whoever eats and drinks forgetfully while fasting should complete his fast, for it is Allah who has fed him and provided for him what he drank. It is recommended for one who is fasting to break his fast early, whenever he is sure the sun has set. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, People will not cease to be in blessings whenever they hasten, breaking their fast. Likewise, it is recommended to have one's iftar, or meal for breakfast, with what the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to break his fast with. This has been reported from Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. As he said, the Prophet used to break his fast on fresh dates before salah, meaning the prayer. But if not fresh dates, then dry dates. Otherwise, he would drink sips of water. It is also recommended to say a supplication when breaking one's fast at iftar. It has been established that the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, when breaking his fast would say, the thirst is gone and the veins are moistened and the reward is established by the grace of Allah Almighty. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him also said, indeed for everyone who fasts at the time of breaking the fast is a prayer that will never be rejected. One who is fasting has to avoid vain talk and obscenity. This is because the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, On the day when any of you fasts, he should not utter vain talk, a rafath, and should not fight nor shout. If anyone abuses or fights him, he should say, I am fasting. Similarly, it is recommended to worship Allah Almighty more as righteous deeds in Ramadan are rewarded in manifolds. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, 
was the most generous of men. And he used to be more generous in Ramadan. When Jibreel met him, Jibreel used to meet him every night of Ramadan to revise the Qur'an with him. Indeed, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, then used to be more generous than the blowing wind.